Hello and happy Monday afternoon. And uh, this is attempt number two. Uh, I'm a little later than I said I would be because for the last 12 minutes, I've been live on Facebook through my Facebook app. And um, I uh, was getting messages saying, hey, I don't see you're live, where are you? And it turns out there was some bug and my app is actually was actually not showing me to anybody even though I, so I spent 12 minutes just talking at an empty phone, which is a little embarrassing. <laughs> but happy afternoon, Monday afternoon. It doesn't quite have the same alliterative loveliness that Monday morning coffee has, um, but my, you might have seen my partner David and I were in San Antonio for the weekend to celebrate our sixth wedding anniversary, which was yesterday. And it was lovely. I would highly recommend a visit to San Antonio. It's actually a really cool city with lots of interesting history and historic buildings and great food and the river walk is really neat. Yesterday we actually took um, the afternoon, I guess it was like morning to early afternoon and we biked for 20 miles on the river walk to go see a lot of the historic missions and that was fascinating and they were beautiful and um, and then this morning we went to the Alamo, uh, which was really cool, really cool building, lots of interesting history and kind of neat to see how they're, um, how they're kind of like renovating and restoring and, and kind of taking care of that building as it's sort of not, you know, crumbling and old and maybe not super well, uh, uh, built in the first place. So that was really interesting to learn about. And, uh, you know, I didn't want to just rush home. It's about an hour and a half drive from San Antonio to Austin. I didn't want to rush home to be here, you know, for uh, Monday morning coffee and potentially be scattered and tired and what have you. Now, so for my afternoon coffee, <laughs> I'm drinking uh, Chameleon Cold Brew, which is this lovely kind of smoky cold brew that's uh, done in Austin. It's not quite espresso strength, but it's stronger than usual. So I dilute it with some water and then I put a little bit of um, Califia Farms Barista Blend Oat Milk, which is delicious and creamy and lovely. It's the most similar to dairy milk that I've found. And uh, that's not soy milk anyways, which I really, I really love. I prefer non-dairy milks because dairy doesn't really agree with me. So anyways, it's been, um, it's been a bit of a tricky week for me. Uh, because so last week, um, Thursday was the first year anniversary of my mother's passing. And, uh, and then of course, Sunday, this last Sunday was both my wedding anniversary with David and mother's day. And, uh, so I, you know, I spent a, quite a bit of yet last week feeling, um, you know, when you're experiencing grief and when you've experienced a big grief and I'm sure many of you have, it's just part of living as a human. There are parts of it that sit with you for always, and there are times when it'll kind of, even when it's an old grief, it'll kind of crest up and you'll, you'll be in it and it'll feel almost new in a way. Um, and it can have physiological effects. So last week, um, Thursday and Friday, I was feeling real tired and just like I wanted to cuddle up in a blanket and um, sleep and, and kind of care for myself. So I did a lot of that. But I also worked on, um, the piece that I shared with you last week that I had kind of just started to write, just kind of came up with that idea. And this piece feels important to me somehow. It's called, I'm calling it Emerge because it feels a little bit like it's about kind of coming out of a cocoon, you know, emerging back into something that's a semblance of, of normal life um, after the pandemic. And of course the pandemic is still raging in many places. Um, but for me personally, because a couple weeks ago I became fully vaccinated, I was able to go on a vacation and I started, when we got back, I started a Spanish class and I started the trapeze class. So, you know, trying to create something resembling a normal life because David and I moved here to Austin from New Zealand last March at the start of the pandemic. So we basically threw up everything in our, that, that created our life and our sense of routines and our sense of kind of domestic who we are, thinking, hey, we'll rec recreate all of that, we'll rebuild it all when we get to Austin. But then when we, when we got here and finally kind of got our feet on the ground enough to start building, there was a pandemic happening. So we didn't have all the tools available to us to build what we you know, might have wanted to build. 
So suffice it to say, it's been a weird year and this piece feels like it's important emotional kind of language about what it's feeling like, the, the hesitancy and, and the beauty and the hope and the, and the kind of the new pieces that are coming out. Um, so I actually wanna play it for you again. Um, and you, and I'll, you, I'm sure you'll hear there's a little more confidence, of course, after a week and there's some new parts. Um, I haven't played over the weekend, so that, that's something, but um, I still wanna play it. I still wanna share it with you and hear your thoughts. And um, once again, please say hello when you're here. Um, now, I, it's looking like this bug that I have had in the past is still going on with Facebook and that I cannot see your comments live, which is a bummer. And I, I'm gonna try to do something about that um, because what's the point of going live if I don't get to actually talk to you in time? But I promise after I get off, uh, I always go and I reply to every comment because I love seeing your comments and I love interacting with you. I love knowing that you're here with me. Um, so I wanna play what I have so far, this piece for you. And it is, as with any in progress piece, and this is just kind of a part and parcel of being a part and being a witness to the composition process there are some like halting moments and there will be some moments where i slow down because i haven't practiced something enough to be able to play it fast but so this is not quite what it's going to sound like when it's recorded when it's done when it's polished but that's not what this is about this is you getting to see kind of a window into what the process what my process is so i want to share kind of i guess the current state of this piece emerge with you, fueled by some coffee, of course. <laughs>
that's where I'm up to. And I'm really excited to see what comes next in that piece. It feels like it's sort of organically unfolding and I'll write a bit and then I'll just sort of move away from the piano and kind of sit with the tune for a little bit. In fact, that last little bit, um, I kind of came up with in my head while we were in San Antonio and I was away from the piano. And so I actually wrote that on the piano just maybe, I don't know, 20 minutes before, uh, before now, <laughs> before I started this. So that's, um, it's kind of an interesting process, but I think it's worth, you know, I've had a lot of questions about what my creative process is. Um, and I would say it's really different it can be different every time, you know? Um, and so this kind of experience where it feels like the piece is almost writing itself, like I go away from the piano and then it's just kind of running in my head and I go, oh, I guess that's what happens next. Um, that hasn't happened for a while because I have, you know, I had the 52 and after that I had the Outlaw Ocean Music Project. So I was pushing music out, you know, as quickly as I could, like it's sort of actively creating it as opposed to uh, letting it sort of bubble up, which is, is a kind of different, a different experience, I guess, as a creator. Um, feel free also in the comments. Again, I cannot see your comments because there is a bug with Facebook right now. I hope you all are enjoying and I hope you're all having a good day. Um, if you have any questions, anything that you'd like me to answer in one of these Monday morning coffees, or in this case, Monday afternoon coffee, um, feel free to ask it. And uh, if you'd prefer for me to answer it live, um, you can say that, uh, or I can just make the decision about whether I'm gonna type you an answer or whether I'm just gonna answer it next week, next Monday. Um, and then lately, so I've been doing this thing lately where I'm playing sort of a randomly chosen, not randomly chosen, I mean they're chosen by me, um, classical piece to share with you. Um, something that I enjoy sight reading or something that maybe I played in my college days, which is, this is this one that I'm gonna share with you, excuse me, is one that I played uh, for one of my juries when I was in college, which is kind of like, let's see, how, how do I put it? When you're a performance, uh, when you're a performance major, you have to have these things called juries, which are basically when you're in school, you're in school to become a better musician, a better music performer. Um, this is kind of, it's kind of your final exam of each quarter, I guess. Uh, so you have to prepare something for your jury and then you play it kind of, you perform it kind of like an audition. You perform it in front of um, all the faculty uh, in, in the school and um, then you get graded for that and you get feedback sometimes. Um, but yeah, I wanted to play for you this Chopin. Chopin Prelude, and it's his first prelude in the Opus 28 series. Um, and I like it, it's fun to play because it's um, the, the tempo marking on it, which is kind of like the mood and speed marking that is at the beginning of almost every piece is agitato, so agitated. And um, it's intended to be like, sort of like lots of like, sort of like wavy energy. It's just, it's kind of fun to play and also, um, since I don't know if you've been following, you might know that last January, like over a year ago, I, uh, I fell and I kind of gouged open my right hand. Um, and I still like can't quite reach as far as I could before. So this is a really good one for reaching. I have teensy tiny little hands for a pianist. And so my reach is really important to me. Um, and this piece is really good for practicing my reach. So it's a good one to play for you. Again, this is the, it's a Chopin prelude. It's the first one from his Opus 28. I will see how well I can sight read it for you. <laughs>
tactic. <laughs> and preludes are often intended, it depends on who wrote them, of course, but uh, Chopin preludes, anyways, are always short. Um, they're, a, you know, a prelude to something else or a prelude to playing, a prelude to practicing. That's kind of how it's intended to be. And now, man, I really wish I could see your comments. I think this week I'm gonna have to address that somehow, either see if I can get Facebook to fix it or make a shift over to a place where I can actually see your comments because it's such a bummer to be live and to not see what you're saying when you're saying it. Um, I, I'm gonna do a little improvising because that's always how I, how I end these and um, improvising is just I'm gonna make it up on the spot and we'll see what it sounds like it's often an interesting snapshot of where my brain is at today I'm feeling slightly scattered and tired because it was a fun delightful weekend and um, so we'll see what scattered and tired sounds like <laughs> That's pretty cool. I feel like scattered and tired can work sometimes. <laughs> uh, so this was this has been Monday afternoon coffee with a slightly scattered and tired Rachel, who's had a bit of a challenging week. But I'm happy to be here with you, and I'm so happy you joined me. I really, I really appreciate you coming and 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 joining me and and spending time with me on Monday. I'm sure it would feel more like spending time with me if I was able to see your comments and respond to them in the moment, but I promise afterwards I will pop on and, and respond to all your comments because I really cherish the fact that you're here and I cherish the things you have to say to me. So take care of yourself this week. It feels somehow like it might be extra important this week. It feels important for me. Maybe that's probably, I'm just projecting, but it may be important for you too. So take care of yourself because you're the best person to take care of you. And if you have the extra energy, take care of the people you love. 
And if you've got the energy beyond that, take care of everybody else. Because if not that, why are we here? Mwah. Have a good week and I'll see you next Monday.